So in this lesson, we're gonna look at derivatives and integrals of exponential functions. So what do we know? We know the derivative with respect to x of e to the x is e to the x. So if you wanna find the antiderivative of e to the x dx, of course, just going backwards, that would be e to the x plus c. So that's fairly useful for us. So looking at an example, if I want the integral of e to the 4x, to do this, we're going to use a u substitution. What am I going to say? I'm going to say u is 4x. So the derivative of u with respect to x is 4. So du is 4dx. du over four equals dx. So what this becomes is the integral of e to the four x, four x is u. So we get the integral of e to the u, dx is du over four. Now, the one fourth can come in front. So we have one fourth times the integral of e to the u du, but we said the integral of e to the x dx is e to the x plus c, so the integral of e to the u du is e to the u plus c. So we get one fourth times e to the u plus c. One fourth e to the u, one fourth of c is just a different c, and then what is u? u is four x. So we get one fourth e to the four x plus c is that antiderivative. Now we can actually generalize that into a rule. If I'm looking at the integral of e to the kx, we're going to let, where k is a constant, we're gonna let u equal kx. The derivative with respect to x of u, du dx is k. So du is k dx, du divided by k equals dx. And you'll see how this is going to work. So now we've got the integral of e to the kx, which is the integral of e to the u. dx is du over k, but k is a constant. So that's in essence one over k. Remember, that's what that means, right? e to the u times one over k du. So the one over k is a constant multiplier. So we get one over k times the integral of e to the u du, which is one over k. The integral of e to the u is e to the u, since the derivative of e to the x is e to the x going backwards. We get e to the u plus c where u is kx. So we get one over k times e to the kx plus c, or if you prefer e to the kx over k. So that rule can actually save you some time. Integral of e to the kx dx is e to the kx over k plus c. So using that rule then I could say the integral of e to the negative three x for example is e to the negative three x over negative three plus c which you might wanna write as one over negative three e to the three x plus e. So that's just kind of helpful to know. But what if we're not dealing with an exponential function of exactly that's this form? So let's say we are looking at the integral of two to the x. How do we do this? How do we do the integral of two to the x? Well, I do this with a u substitution. And I'm going to say let u equal two to the x. If we wanna pull the exponent down, we're gonna take a log of both sides. So we get log of u is log of two to the x. And then the x comes down front and we get natural log of u is x times natural log two. At this point, I'm gonna take the derivative with respect to x of both sides. The derivative with respect to x of natural log u is the derivative with respect to x of x times the natural log of two. Now the derivative of the log of something is one over the something times the derivative of the something. 
one over u times the derivative with respect to x of u. Over on this side, recognize that natural log two was a constant and it can come out in front. So we get natural log two times the derivative with respect to x of x. What do we have now? We have one over u du dx equals natural log two times one. And our goal typically is to solve for dx because that's what we're gonna to wanna to substitute. So we get one over u du equals natural log two times dx. And then dividing by the natural log two, we get one over u log two du equals dx. So there's a lot going on here. <clears throat> You can see that this will generate a rule for us. So now what do I get? I have the integral of two to the x, two to the x is u. dx is one over u log two du. So that you can see what happens, we can see the u's go away and you get one over log two, which is a constant and come out in front one over log two times the integral of du, which for emphasis, I'm gonna say the integral of one du. Tell me something whose derivative is one if the variable is u, and the answer of course is just u. So one over natural log two times u plus c, what is u? u is two to the x. One over natural log two times two to the x plus c. And in fact, we can generalize this to a similar sort of rule. If I have the integral of some base a to the x, the integral of b to the x dx is going to be one over natural log b times b to the x plus c. Frankly, I like you to keep in mind the u substitution though. I think that's helpful as we do the analysis too see how this works. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, do a couple of problems that mixes these ideas. So if I wanna take a look at the following, what is the integral of three X times E to the negative two X squared DX? I've got to pick a U and hopefully that will be enough for us to analyze how this is going to behave. So we'll say u is negative two x squared. So we'll take the derivative with respect to x of u equals the derivative with respect to x of negative two x squared. Derivative with respect to x of u du dx is derivative with respect to x of negative two x squared is negative four x. We typically want to solve for dx. So du is negative four x dx, then dividing by negative four x. Du over negative four x equals dx. So where does that land me? Integral three x stays three x e to the negative two x squared, that's e to the u dx is du over negative four x. And you'll notice the x's go away. So the x's divide out. Three over negative four can come out in front, negative three fourths times the integral of e to the u du. But the integral of e to the u is e to the u. So we get negative three fourths e to the u plus c and then we get negative three fourths e to the negative two x squared plus c. And let's take a look at one more kind of problem. What if I have the integral of x times five to the x squared dx. 
how am I going to do this? So this again mixes and matches our two concepts. I prefer just to use a U substitution. Now there's other ways you can do this, but I'm going to let U equal five to the X squared. Don't take a natural log of both sides. So I have natural log U equals natural log five to the X squared. And then that X squared comes down front. So next we get natural log U equals X squared natural log five. My next move is to take the derivative with respect to X of both sides. The derivative with respect to X of natural log U equals the derivative with respect to X of X squared times natural log five. The derivative of the log of something one over the something one over u times the derivative with respect to x of u. On the right side here, natural log five is a constant. It's a number that comes out in front of the derivative operator. Natural log five times the derivative with respect to x of x squared. Now I have one over u, the derivative with respect to x of u is du dx equals natural log five times two X. Now, you know, our goal typically is to solve for this DX to substitute it. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by DX and I get one over U DU equals natural log five times two X DX. And if I solve for DX, I divide by that stuff that's multiplying DX and we get one over U times natural log five times two X du equals dx. And we're going to substitute all of that in over on this left side. So we have the integral of X times five to the X squared is U. dx as you see is one over U log five, two X U log five, 2x du. So we are happy about something. Certainly I need the x's to go away and they do. So this x divides out this x. But also this u divides out this u. So all I have left is I have the integral of one over log five times u, two, one over two log five du which is one over two natural log five times the integral of one du. So tell me a function whose derivative is one, it's just the variable, it's just u. One over two log five times u plus c, but what was u? u was five to the x squared. So one over two log five times five to the x squared plus c.